we're back. We're looking at 2020.48.12.1. It's got the same release notes, so let's get into a deep dive and figure out what's hidden in under the covers. And we'll catch you on the flip side. First, we're going to restart the computer just in case. And then we're going to go ahead and start with the yellow light uh, test, the flashing yellow lights. Then we'll at some point get into a smart summon to target, smart summon come to me, and we're also going to try the turn that the car shouldn't be able to do, that it does do. Navigate on autopilot routing and, and how it drives, and then we'll see whatever else I come across in the meantime. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Right, first thing we're going to retest is the text messages to see if it's any better than when I tried it with my uncle. Uh, Luna's going to send us a couple test text messages. Sharon with Gig Green says test. That's a good test, dear. Yeah, close enough. Sharon uh, with Gig Green says who D H D H D H R D G D H D D H F G G H. Smiley face. Okay, so it didn't read that one, nor did it give a scrolly. So, Model F, uh, 3 and Model Sharon 1... Sharon with Gig oh. Green says Laura Mipesim is simply dummy text of the printing and typesetting industry. Laura Mipesim has been the industry's standard dummy text ever since the 1500s, recently with disc... Alright, well, at least we can interrupt it. Let's see if it's any better on the, uh, the screen. But on Model 3 and Model Y, it's a lot more uh, useful with these improvements now that you can... Since, since they have a touch screen for that interface. Okay, so that's not so bad. I wasn't sure how much personal information I had to blur out with this. Okay, so we do get the improved text messages in the app. That's pretty nice. But uh, we don't get it on the binnacle, which isn't as useful. So let's do this. Let's close this back, and then let's see what happens if I get uh, a bunch of text in a row. Tweet says at window store, get updates. Nobody asked you about tweet. Sharon uh, with Gig Green says J. G. Alright, that wasn't the whole chain, but it's getting better. So let's go back to um, let's go back to the phone app. And so this card is this thing where messages that are way older than they actually are come back up in here. And so she did send J and G, and she also sent a couple of K's and a J, and they didn't make it. So it's better, but it's not there yet. All right, let's hit the road. All right, let's see how it accelerates when behind another car at a green light. If it's leisurely or if it's aggressive. Uh, it's keeping up with the flow. I'd say it's on the aggressive side, not in a bad way. Uh, it did slow way down when this slow Corolla decided to not accelerate as a Corolla is capable of doing. All right, coming up is the yellow light. All right, we've got the flashing yellow lights up ahead. The car does see them. And proceeds through with no problem. Whoa, whoa, maybe not. Uh, so halfway through after the Corolla had already cleared the, uh, the lights for us, it decided it wanted to stop. Let's try it the other direction, just for consistency. Uh, this one is flashing as well, but it's not one we could possibly go straight through. Oh, Model 3, since it is a uh, yielding left. All right. All right, now we have no lead car. Let's see how it does here. Acknowledge, acknowledge, keeps going, okay. Not as good as last time, but still better than some of the 
abysmal failures we've seen from, from the flashy light test. And we'll catch you on the flip side. All right, let's see how it does getting on to I-95. Uh, the map is still telling us that it will make that turn that it is not advertised to be able to make. All right, let's help it to get on the highway, start flashing the turn signals. Okay, perfect. And let's watch the speed limits and see what it does. Oh. All right, down to 35, you know, 60. 40 and a 60. Slowing down for who knows why. Okay. 35 and a 60. I don't think it's going to recover. Uh, start flashing the signal. There's a camera coming. Oh, there it goes. All right. 50. Okay. Still not quite where it needs to be. And I doubt it will recover more than that because it never has in the past. So let's help it out. Go back up 65, please. And then uh, we will see how it handles the uh, merge onto 95 from this frontage road, this on-ramp, because we've got some speed today. And the last several versions of this release, the uh, it's been unstable. It's been like as if the, as if the road was super curvy and it was doing 65 and it didn't know how to handle itself. But uh, I mean, it is a slight curve, but it's not that dramatic. It's not as dramatic as the car is making it out to be. Well, okay, we won't be doing it at full speed, but we still will be doing it at a decent clip. All right, swing left, swing right. All right, it wasn't unstable, but... Oh, whoa, come on now. The reason I help it out is sometimes it gets stuck in that lane. And that's what we've got so far, so we'll catch you on the flip side at the uh, at the non-advertised maneuver. Okay, we're approaching that turn. Let's see what happens. All right, you should get a signal and it should move over. That part's normal. All right. Now the abnormal part. It should still pick the correct lane instead of going through the stoplight. It will think that there is a stop at the end of the turn. All right. Wow, we did it with minimal lane markings because uh, that's all salted and sanded. Uh, all right. It's still hunting, but it's doing it quite well. That's a Model Y coming up on us. And go. Go straight. You got it. All right. Good job. All right. The Model Y is letting us in. All right. Let's go ahead and take it. All right, it aborted that because the lane became solid. The reason it took so long is this Sienna is just tooling about. That's an administrative speed limit when it goes from 40 to 50. <laughs> There's a Model Y. There we go. Yay. All right. And it's not going to make this turn, so I will manually do it. Yasla. <laughs> yes, cool. All right. Let's move over. All right. And. Yeah. He waved. <laughs> So let's see which lane it picks. I think that's just a 50-50 shot because uh, it's not a nav on autopilot. All right, we will see you at the parking lot. All right, let's see how it does here. It shouldn't take it and oh, it's jumping lanes. All right, so that won't work. It offered to and it started to turn, but I couldn't have it turn into the Ford, sorry, the uh, Mercury Mountaineer. Mariner, Mariner, the Ford Escape Cologne. Anyway, so we'll see you at the parking lot. This is just a test to see if the car still thinks that this shopping center is a public road. I don't expect it to work, otherwise I'd do a screenshot. This one cannot be started. Okay, let's try it again. It's 
Some are not available on public roads. All right, so we're going to go to the supercharger and try out Summon to Target and Smart Summon. Catch you on the flip side. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, <laughs> both of the superchargers near uh, where we stay are at malls, being uh, the Woodridge supercharger where we are now and the Springfield uh, Lowesdale Mall supercharger. And uh, it, it's a little full the Sunday before Christmas on a Friday uh, to be messing around with uh, to be messing around with uh, any sort of smart summon, either to target or come to me summon. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to that office park, medical park that we shot some of the uh, the puppy mode in, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Oh, but before I do that, the uh, I saved some footage. I need to remember to get it off the uh, the drive, where we were in regular autopilot at a stoplight. And it was doing the thing, every, everything was correct, except that uh, two lanes over in the turning lane, somebody made a really wild move, and then a Silverado came up on them. And I was starting to get a little nervous, thinking that they were going to do something aggressive and stupid. But little, little did I notice, until it had already been halfway through, uh, while we were stationary, the car had cocked the wheel hard right. And then once the light turned green, and there was a little bit of space, even before the lane started to move, but the person in front of us had inched up the car, then continued to move hard right until it got to the edge of the lane and then it moved forward a little bit. And with that, it uh, once it had passed where it was out of the danger zone of the Silverado getting an attitude and joking around the, uh, the car in front of it, then our car straightened up and then it went back to centering in the lane. And I thought that was pretty smart, uh, especially since we don't have the City Streets Beta. And so we'll catch you at the Metal Park on the flip side. The reason I chose the superchargers was because they are public places where people won't freak out about a Tesla and a camera, and they're known locations where Smart Summon functions correctly. So they are a good place to retest. But uh, as I said, it is shopping crunch time, so there was no space available. Uh, <laughs> this van is doing a repeat of what that other vehicle is doing. It looks like we might get stuck. This little white uh, caravan. Yep, let's go around him. Okay, we're recording screen. We are inside the car. We're about to perform a smart summon to target before I get out and do regular smart summon. Come on. There we go. So now let's go and do summon, smart summon. Oh good, it automatically went into map mode instead of that stupid uh, pictorial mode like it did last time. All right, so we're going to go from where we are now to where I had the car pick me up during the puppy mode. And let's see how she does. Go to target. Right, we'll also see how it does with the speed bump. Oh wait, that's not a speed bump, that's a piece of light. Whoa. I don't blame it. That's uh, kind of a dim corner. It did have trouble with this corner last time too, so. It's taking its time, it's being careful. I like how it turns on the high beams. Well, the high beams aren't on today. The fog lights and the rear fog lights are. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Luna's over here recording me, <laughs> recording you guys. All right, that was a successful smart summon to target. All right, so what's going to happen now is I didn't bring the 368K, so we're just going to do the regular camera, and I'm going to not really test the puppy, I'm just going to call it over to me, and we'll catch you on the flip side. So I'm just going to go around the corner by that dumpster, and we're going to call the car to us. All right, there it is, there's a train, Let's see how the car does. Come to me. Now the high beams. Okay. Interesting it chose to just run through all the parking spots. I mean, I know I did set it up that way, but... Interesting choice. I like how cautious it is in the curves. 
nice smooth motion. It mostly stayed to inside of the street until it got to me and now it's all in the middle of the road. Summit complete. All right, so they didn't break it this time. We're gonna catch you with some conclusions. Oh wow, nice, it opened the door for me this time. Sometimes after a smart summon. Sometimes after a smart summon, it doesn't open the door. And that time it did. And yeah, so let's, up oh, there, all the way too. All right, so we'll catch you for some conclusions on the flip side. Before we jump into the conclusion, I wanna thank our patrons, Fred B at the $10 level, and Jason B at the $5 level. So let's talk about the, uh, the, the situation with the software. It still has the mysterious slowdown approaching a green light that you've already approved, where it wants to go 5, 10, 15, 20 miles an hour under the speed limit, uh, even though you're showing the green bar and everything. There's no traffic around you, no reason for the car to slow down, and it, it wants to slow down. But not at all of them, so it's you're going to roll the dice and figure out what's going to happen when you, when you come up, if it's going to be slow or at speed or at the set speed. The routing for Navigate on Autopilot is just the same as always. It's just solid. This is another one of the A releases where the car seems to be professional and smooth rather than this jerky, hunting all over the road situation. The regular Autopilot seems just as good. And as I pointed out, and I'll show you in that video, or I've already, by the time you've seen this, you've already seen that video where the car was reacting to insanity on the road. That was... That was good to see. They didn't uh, mess with any of my other settings, and the Spotify login issue didn't pop up for us during today's testing. That doesn't mean that it's fixed, but I have hope that it is something that's fixed, given the amount of people I saw complaining about how well Spotify worked for them. So if you don't already have this version, I'd give it a 10 stars. Go ahead and up update to it, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Over here are some videos that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy, and over here is the subscription bubble. Catch you next time. Thank you.